A given river and tributary system exist as described in the table. Previous studies conducted downstream of where these two sources mix have determined that negative impacts to aquatic life occur when dissolved oxygen drops below 5 mg per liter. Due to a proposed dam being considered upstream of the mixing point, the flow of the river is expected to be reduced in the future. By how much can the flow be reduced, if at all, in CFS without causing adverse impacts to aquatic life downstream of the mixing point? So, we have a given river and tributary system existing as described in this table here. The way the problem is describing it is we have the river here and a tributary here. And the downstream mixing point would be somewhere around here after those two sources come together. So this problem is a pretty basic example of a mass balance problem that you would find in an undergraduate environmental engineering class. I don't think there's an equation for it in the reference manual. The closest I found was on page 460. If you want to see an example of what a mass balance equation for a slightly different application might look like, the version of the mass balance equation that we want to use can instead be written as follows. Q1 C1 plus Q2 C2 equals Q3 C3 where Q3 is going to be a combination of Q1 plus Q2. So let's begin. The problem is asking us to find how much flow in the river can be reduced upstream of the river and tributary mixing point before the section of the river downstream of the mixing point drops below five milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. So they wanna know how much can change up here such that down here doesn't drop below a certain point. So step one is going to be to find the current concentration in the river and tributary downstream of the mixing point. So let's write this out. In this case, Q1 we're going to say is the river. So 85 feet cubed per second times the concentration of six milligrams per liter plus 25 cubic feet per second from the tributary times three milligrams per liter equals the sum of these two together is going to be 110 cubic feet per second times whatever the concentration currently is downstream. And solving for this, we can find that C3 is going to be just about 5.32 milligrams per liter. So as we can see, 5.32 is gonna be greater than the current standard. So the way the question is asking us, the river can drop by some amount of flow upstream here before the downstream mixing point goes from 5.32 to five. So our answer of zero is already crossed off. Now, step two is going to be to set the C3 term at five milligrams per liter, and then calculate backwards for what Q1 would need to be in order to achieve this lower concentration limit. So let's do that now. Now we're going to say Q1 cubic feet per second times six milligrams per liter plus 25 cubic feet per second times three milligrams per liter equals, we have to solve for Q1 still, plus 25 cubic feet per second. And our lower limit here, as we just described, is going to be set at five milligrams per liter. So solving this out, we're going to get 6Q1, I'm going to ignore units for simplicity's sake here, plus 75 equals 5Q1 plus 125. And simplifying this out, we will get Q1 equals 
50 cubic feet per second. So finally, the question is phrased, by how much can the flow be reduced? So we simply need to subtract the new flow from the old flow to find the difference. So step three is very simple. It's going to be Q1 old minus Q1 new, or in this case, 85 minus 50 cubic feet per second will give us an answer of 35 cubic feet per second. We can see that answer is number two over here, and the problem is solved. So this problem is a simple mass balance problem that needs to be calculated twice. The real trick here is just reading the problem carefully to understand what is being asked for. Otherwise, we might select the wrong answer from a different term that we have already calculated for, such as 50. This problem also gives you an option to, for the answer you would get if you only divide the river by the difference in concentrations as well. So if you divided 5.32 by 5 and then divided the flow of 85 by that percent, you would get something closer to 76.5. But again, we're looking for Q1 and the difference in these calculations is at the mixing point in Q3. So avoid those tricks by knowing where your locations of Q1, Q2, and Q3 are and you should be fine. And that's it.